What's going on everybody? Welcome back to OH Studio. Today we're learning this. Let's do it. Okay, you guys know the drill. First thing we're going to do is create a new document. Eight and a half by 11 standard letter size in portrait mode. We have two pages that are facing and we're starting on the second page because we don't want that cover page. Then we're going to have 0.5 inch in margin and a quarter inch in column gutter. First thing we're going to do is create our gradient, which is very important. Make sure you have this set up. This is the most important step. So first thing we're going to do is I really like to work on Essential Classic. So I'm going to change my workspace to Essential Classic. But the windows that you're going to need to have open is if you scroll down to window, color, I need to switch on gradients, which I already have over here. And I also need to switch on swatches, which is over here. These are the two that we need in order to do today's video. So I'm going to actually drag the gradient out because I need it open together with the swatches. Kind of want to see both of them in order for this to work. And we're just going to create a new gradient. So if I have a gradient like this, and let's say I create something like here, uh, what I can do is use the gradient swatch tool and just create something like this. Now, right now it is on the stroke. So if we switch this over here, you can see that it will pop up. If I click right into the gradient tab, it'll bring out these two tick looking things. And these are the colors that it's transitioning to. All we have to do is drag from our swatches. So these are the colors in our swatches. You can obviously add additional ones or even adjust this by clicking that button. But we're going to just keep it on the regular normal swatches that InDesign come with. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag this into this little box over here and we'll drag the blue onto the other box. And you can see that sometimes you're not super accurate with these things and then you create an extra one. If you do make an extra one, just drag this box out and drag this all the way to the end and you're good to go. So this is our swatch and we want to make sure that we actually create a new swatch for it. So over here where it says new swatch, we're going to go ahead and create that swatch for the gradient that we just made. So if you click that and a new gradient swatch pops up, you're good to go. Then we can actually test this out. So right now we have this gradient. And then if we actually use the gradient swatch tool, we can actually move where the gradient is. So for example, if I drag it around like this, then you can see that the actual gradient also changes. And how it works is basically where you start your mouse click is going to be the color on the left. And then where you drag it is going to be the color on the right. So feel free to play around with this until you're familiar with the gradient tool. But we're going to go ahead and delete this guy. I'm going to right click on my ellipse tool and just change it into a rectangular tool. You might have already had that selected, but I'm going to just drag in big box around the entire page and we're going to fill it with a gradient. So I went to the gradient swatch tool and I just drag something out. Now for the background for this, we're actually going to go back to our gradient window and we're going to change it into radio. That means that it's more of a circular gradient rather than a more linear gradient. So I'm going to drag this out until I have something that's not super strong for both colors and that we can have a nice blend of a blue and a pink. So that looks pretty good to me. Next thing we're doing is creating some circles and we're going to right click on our rectangle tool, go into our lips tool, and I'm just going to create a circle holding shift to make that a perfect circle. And we're going to create a circle that's, I feel like big enough to fit maybe a third or a quarter of the page. And we're going to make sure that this is in the center of the page. Boom, just like that. And we're going to do the same thing. Go to our gradient swatch tool and just drag it around like that. But for these circles, we're actually going to use the linear swatch. And I find that the way you do this is you drag one color from the corner and you drag a tiny bit out just to get that nice blend of the two colors that you actually want. Now, all we're going to do is copy this. So holding shift and copy that up and copy one all the way down here. Now they're just barely going to touch like that. And we're actually just going to either rotate this. So if I go to the corner and I simply rotate it like that, you can also just play around with the swatch tool. So if I click into this, go back to my gradient swatch tool and just click around, then that also works. So play around with this until you find a combination that you really like. Now it's time to play around with some text and really populate this page 
with what we want it to show. So if I go ahead and create a text box here and just populate it with the text that I actually want, for this, we are going to be using a new font. We're going to be using Franklin Gothic Heavy, and I'm changing this to that. And then make sure that this is in a legible color. So maybe we want to change this to a white color. That looks pretty good. We're also going to drag a nice big title for this. So for example, if I want this to say, learn this, we're going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, change it to our paper color and change it to our font, which is Franklin Gothic Heavy. Great. So that's gonna stay there for now, but we'll change the position of this in a little bit. On the bottom, we also want to just give it a little bit of a text element down here. Uh, for the serif fonts, which is what people read, we're gonna use Kepler, and then just changing this to a paper font as well. So that looks pretty good. Hey, I know what we're making in this video is pretty cool, but let me show you something cooler. It's called Issue and they're today's sponsor. What I can actually do is I can actually go on and upload this, our design, our layout, if it was a part of a bigger magazine online, and they can actually flip through this. And all I have to do is send this to my client, my teacher as a URL. They also have integration with InDesign and all that good stuff, so check them out. And if you use the code LYH25 at checkout, you can have 25% off of their yearly subscription. So make sure you check them out. And thank you, Issue, for sponsoring this video. All right, now that we have our left page done, we're gonna move on to the right side. And what I actually found to be really interesting is the thing that really works well with these gradients are actually black and white photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some black and white photos. So I'm going to drag a picture frame or a rectangular frame tool. Uh, and just go across the two pages, maybe a little bit longer, something like that, and drag in my first photo. And I'm going to go ahead and fit it. So right click, fitting, fit frame proportionally, like that. And then I'm also going to drag in another photo. Maybe this wants to be a little bit wider, almost to the halfway, and we're going to fit it just one more time. We're also going to create another picture frame right here right beside the other one, but maybe it doesn't go all the way up to where the margin is just to keep it, you know, playful. And we're going to put in our second photo and we're going to also just spice this up with some text. And then we're going to just adjust this. So I'm going to rotate this. And what I'm actually gonna do is just make sure that this matches the size of this piece of picture. And I'm going to drag this guy out. And you can see that right now, it's not really you know, occupying this entire space. If I want to do that, I can either change it via tracking, uh, or you can do something like just simply changing the font to be a little bit bigger. So if I wanna do, let's say 81, just find a font, play around with it until you find a font size that is pretty good at occupying this entire space. And what you can do, this is pretty cool, what you can do is actually drag this over here and you're going to straighten it like that. And then you're going to highlight this text and we can actually go into our swatches or our colors into our fill. And you can scroll down and actually give it the same gradient swatch that you did with everything that's going on over here. And right now it's behind the pictures. So we're gonna right click and then we're going to arrange and bring to the front. And then we can actually modify this to be anything that we want. So for example, if I just want this to simply say a year, I can put that in and then, you know, place it wherever on the page and I can actually change this if I want to. And another element that you might wanna add into this, and this is totally inspired by the brand new threads thing that came out, is let's say you wanna do just a little loop-de-loop -loop around the corner here, something like that. We can also give it the same gradient swatch as the stroke and what we can do is just change the stroke and then we can actually just move this around. And if we just make this go and arrange this to the back, it'll hide right behind everything on the other page. And you know, if you go into our uh, direct selection tool and click on this guy, you can actually just drag the points around until I find something that I like. So play around with it until you get something cool that you really like. And you can also go over here to the smooth tool. Uh, make sure you have this highlighted. Go to the smooth tool and just drag your mouse around this in the path that you really want it to take. 
and it'll basically smooth out the path for you. So there we go, there's a layout which will be available on our websites. And just to give you guys a little bit of a context, this might be interesting, I don't know. This is kind of all the other ways I thought about laying out these pages until I finally arrived at something like this. Leave a comment and let me know if any of these I should have done instead of the one that I actually did. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned anything new, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.